Hey guys, it's Ashley here, and I'm so excited to be bringing you another video based on all things marketing, business questions, brand new entrepreneur about to launch my product questions. I don't even know if that made sense, but we're rolling with it. I've got my kombucha, not sponsored. I've got my things I want to talk about to you guys today, and we're going to get right into it. So the topic of this video is all things, how do I price my product? So um, if you've been following along on this journey for the last few months, I have um, dove into the world of candle making. So my product is candles, uh, but this actually relates to any product-based business. So I have been doing entrepreneurship and creating and running my own businesses for about six years now, but all of those have been service-based. So it's been a completely new world here in this product industry. And I just wanted to share a little bit of insight. Um, it's not going to go too in depth because I feel like that gets really overwhelming, especially if you're new like me at something. Um, but we're going to discuss how do we accurately price a product, um, price it for us, for our business, for our profits, for longevity and for our customers. So again, I'm not going to get into a ton of detail. So if you have really specific questions, they might be better suited for down in the comments as we roll through this video. Um, and I will answer anything that I know the answer to, and I will gladly tell you that I don't know the answer to it because there is nothing worse than misinformation. Let's just say that right now. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. And again, just so you know, this is a very high level, how do I price my product video? Um, so let's go. All right, so the first thing that we need to know in regards to how to price a product is all of the things that go into making said product. Those are usually called cost of goods sold. You can also see it as COGS, C-O-G-S. Um, that's abbreviation for it. Um, but yeah, it's cost of goods sold. So it's basically like, let's say my kombucha, for instance. So if I am trying to price this product, first and foremost, I have to start with the bare bones information. How much does it cost for me to take the kombucha, to make it, my labor included, and fill this bottle? Then how much does it cost for me to purchase this bottle per unit? And then how much does it cost for me to print my label, to buy my labels, to stick my label on here? All of the components go into the cost of this bottle and making this bottle of kombucha. Again, I'm not even sponsored, but I should be. Also, this shit is dope. So if you guys want good kombucha, I absolutely love them. Okay, guys, another thing that we need to make sure that we're equating for in regards to the total cost of our product is shipping. So if you are going to be an online retailer, you really need to dive down to how much things cost to ship. So I'm not saying necessarily how much shipping costs. But I'm saying, what does the box cost for you to ship it in? Are you needing any wrapping materials, things like peanuts or heavier cardstock paper to wrap your items in? Those are also going to be part of your cost of goods sold. So don't forget to add those in, especially if you're an e-commerce store. My point is, is that we have to take all of the materials that go into making our product, and that's the cost of the product. Now, here's the thing. We also need to equate for our time and labor that goes into making said product. So if you have a product that takes about five minutes to put together, wonderful. You probably don't have to equate for that. But let's say you do needlework and it takes you four hours to make something, one single product, you're going to want to factor in your time and your labor. Now, if you have a product that you're making a lot of and maybe it doesn't take a lot of time, I don't know, guys. That's all going to be personal decision on what you value your time at and what you want to be paid. And that goes into the cost of the product as well. Now, without getting down a slippery, slippery slope, there are other things that need to go into the cost of your product. I'm not going to get into them a ton today, but other things to consider are how much does it cost to insure your products on an annual basis, and then you chunk that down to months, weeks, days, down to the product. Um, there's also things like maybe you have rent involved or any type of overhead that goes into your business. You may or may not decide to put that in the cost of your product. It's completely up to you. I personally am making my candles at home. So right now I'm just keeping really good track of all of the expenses that go into my product and into my business. But as far as my cost of goods sold and for pricing my products, I'm just doing it based off materials um, and a little bit of extra cushion for my labor. 
And just so you know, if you want to dive a little bit more into this, it's kind of like direct costs and indirect costs. So direct costs are going to be all the materials, the cogs that go into it. Indirect costs are going to things be things like rent, overhead, insurance, so on and so forth. I am by no means a pricing expert. I don't even know what they would be called. Um, but this is what I know and this is the lingo that I use. So if you've learned something different, please don't come at me in the comments and just know that everybody teaches differently and hopefully this is still being found as helpful for you. Okay, so now that we have the price for our product, this is where we start to scale to get different margins and profit margins. So the rule of thumb usually is that if we have our product cost, let's say in this case it's $10, just because it's easy and I'm really bad at math. What we normally have been taught is that if you take that $10 and you times it by two or two and a half, that is your wholesale price. Wholesale meaning I am selling this to another business entity that will be selling it direct to the consumer. So it's kind of a middleman that we're adding to the equation. And if you're not sure why you would do bit wholesale or if your right business is the right candidate for wholesale, I have a video that I'll link in this as well that you can go and listen to and come back here. I'm not gonna get into the weeds again, but times two is usually the wholesale price. Times two, two and a half, depending on what your margins are. And that usually means that that wholesale client is going to mark it up double as well. So now the next step is we have our $10 product. So what we're going to do is if I'm selling direct to consumer, like on e-commerce site like Shopify, if my product is $10, the next general rule of thumb is that your MSRP or market suggested retail price, which is the price that customers see, is usually anywhere between times three to four. So if I have a product for $10, I should be selling it anywhere at least between $30 to $40 direct to the customer. So let's go through that again. I have my $10 price. If I'm doing wholesale, general rule of thumb is market up double. So I sell it to them for $20 or $25. Or if you're selling direct to your customers, we do times three or four. So that is a pretty good profit margin. Now you are the owner of your business, so you honestly can do whatever you want, but you do need to consider kind of what the market averages are. So if you haven't done a lot of market research for your business, you definitely should, especially for your niche in your industry. And the reason why I say that is because if you're working in a really competitive or highly saturated industry and you're not exactly promoting yourself or the value as such at the price point you want to be and there's a lot of competitors and people undercutting your price that you would want to be at then you're going to have to plan your marketing as such so if you're going to sell something that could be potentially bought for ten dollars and you want to sell it at twenty dollars you need to have the value and the story and the reason why someone has to buy that product from you hopefully that helps so let's go through it again Wholesale price is times two of our cost. Our cost was $10, so we'd wholesale it for 20. The MSRP or the suggested retail price that we would be selling direct to our customers is anywhere from three to four at least. Now again, you guys can move this needle wherever you want. Maybe you have no interest in selling wholesale and maybe you wanna be a little bit lower priced. You can absolutely do that. You're just gonna play with your profit margin. And your profit margin is, to be clear, if I have a product that's $10 and I'm selling it for $40, my profit margin is going to be that $30 increment that I am making profit on. Okay guys, hopefully you found this video helpful and straight into the point, which is where I like to keep things at. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. If you're also a fellow candle maker, please reach out. I have the Candle Collective, which is our consulting and mentorship program. It's open to anyone. And I also have marketing consulting and mentorship that I'm doing through Hello Mint Marketing. Again, thanks so much for watching guys.